Hey guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. It seems our 2019 predictions video proved pretty divisive, and Port fans in particular were a bit unhappy with the way it unfolded. Apparently I didn't include a single Port highlight. Whoops. Apologies Port fans, I promise I don't have an anti-Port agenda. The video was just a lot of hard work and that was a mistake. It seems the power are a popular choice to slide down the ladder in 2019. To prove I'm not a hater, I'm going to use this video to explain why Port probably shouldn't be written off in 2019. 12 months ago, the power went on a well-documented recruiting drive, picking up a combination of established talent and opposition discards in an attempt to position themselves for a premiership assault. These recruits were largely unsuccessful. Tom Rockliffe battled through injury, while Jack Watts and Stephen Motlop were inconsistent. Thomas, Trengove and Mackenzie had virtually no impact. The power appeared in top 4 contention after 16 rounds last year, before losing 6 winnable games of their last 7 to miss out on final. Compounding this bitter result, the club parted ways with star forward Chad Wingard and wingman Jared Polek, deepening their need for outside speed and skill. Jasper Pittard also left the club, but the power managed to bring in talented hawk Ryan Burton as a replacement. This disappointing end to the season and the loss of these key players has driven most of the AFL community to discount Port Adelaide as a genuine finals contender in 2019. The fact that the club traded aggressively for draft picks last year added to this perception, as it might suggest the power are undertaking a list rebuild and thus may shift their focus from actually winning games to developing their list. But this is not necessarily the case. In my opinion, the strength of their midfield should not be overlooked. Tom Rockliffe may have struggled in 2018, but it was well documented he missed most of the preseason due to injury and struggled to build fitness. There was a six game stretch in the middle of the season where he averaged nearly 26 possessions however, and my bet is that with better luck in 2019, he can return to his absolute best. Rockliffe, alongside stars Ollie Wines and Robbie Gray, actually forms part of a talented midfield group. Additionally, Sam Powell Pepper is one of the most talented young inside mids of the competition. Pal Pepper's season may have been clouded by some off-field incidents, but it is easy to forget that he is just 19 years old, such as his contested ability. With his blend of explosive pace and the ability to win the contested footy, he should be able to shoulder even more midfield responsibility in 2019. Port Adelaide's defence was arguably their strength in 2018 despite injuries, with Tom Jonas leading from the front last year to earn an All-Australian nomination. Up forward, a forward line spearheaded by Charlie Dixon with Gray and Westhoff roading through boasts plenty of quality. It's also important to remember that the Power were 10 and 4 last season for a reason. The Power were travelling well up until that point in a run that included impressive wins over the Premiership Tigers and the Swans in Sydney. Admittedly, their season began to fall apart after the club's shock loss to Fremantle in Perth and hit a low point with their after the siren loss to the Eagles in which three players went down with injury. It's unclear what exactly caused the power season to derail, but I don't subscribe to the theory that they were simply found out against tough opposition. More likely, the form slump was at least partly mental, as things within the club got stale. However, Port have gone through an extensive list shakeup, moving from being the 6th oldest list in the league last year to 14th in 2019. Allegedly, Chad Wingard was offloaded on the basis of attitude problems, as the power also set to address cultural issues within the club. There is no doubt of Wingard's prodigious talent, but it is quite possible that his worth to Port Adelaide has been overstated. Wingard averaged 21 possessions and a goal a game in 2018, but for the money he reportedly wanted, keeping him on the list probably didn't represent great value. The club also let wingman Jared Polak walk to North Melbourne as he sought a bigger contract, unwilling to match their offer. The effect of these losses in the short term is obvious. Both Wingard and Polak are quality players in the prime of their careers, and losing them weakens the side in an area in which they are already deficient, outside speed. However, losing them allowed the club to obtain a really strong draft position last year, taking three picks in the first round. Connor Rosie, Zach Butters and Xavier Dersma. While they may just be kids, all three players were talented outside mids who don't rely on a contested game and therefore, in my opinion, could impact in their first season with their pace and skill. Connor Rosie in particular could also help fill the void by Wingard by playing minutes as a lead up forward. An influx of youth can also have a rejuvenating effect on a playing list. 
Last year's premiers, West Coast, offloaded hundreds of games of experience at the end of 2017 and attacked the draft heavily. Many perceive this to be a start of a rebuild, but a refreshed Eagles side was able to go all the way to claim premiership glory. Similarly, I don't necessarily believe the power are about to embark on a list rebuild and can remain a finals contender in 2019. It seems part of the issue at Port Adelaide is mental, with several late season losses by under 10 points ultimately costing them a top 8 spot. In the past 4 seasons, the Power have finished 9th or 10th 3 times, showing an inability to take the next step. So that begs the question, is 2019 the year the Power take the next step? Look, despite the points I've made in this video, I'm going to reinforce my prediction in my previous video and say they will narrowly miss the 8. I certainly consider them a finals contender, but for me, they form part of a mid-table glut that I find hard to separate, and it's difficult to see them improving as much as other sides around them in 2019. From a talent perspective, there is no issue. I believe they are actually a more talented list than their recent results have suggested, and perhaps exceed teams like North Melbourne and Essendon in this regard. However, the lack of consistency in this regard makes it hard for me to slot them into my top 8. So at the end of all that, how do you feel? Do you agree with my assertion that the power shouldn't be written off in 2019? Or do you feel that I'm actually underselling their ability? As always, I welcome you to comment your opinion in the comment section below. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you next time.